Hey everybody, welcome back to Investing with Wesley. You know, tax season is just around the corner and in today's episode, I wanna talk about taxes. Not necessarily how to save money on taxes or new tax changes that are coming. I just wanna talk about taxes in general and namely answer the question on why we even pay taxes anymore. So with that being said, let's get into it. Okay, so let's start by defining what a tax is. A tax is really just the government imposing a certain dollar amount to limit your spending power so that they could have that spending power. It's imposing really some kind of dollar amount for the benefit of the government only. As an example, you could make $3,000 a month, but fall into a certain percent of tax bracket. So they take that percent right off the top of your 3,000. You're left with, let's just say 2,000, but the government gets that other thousand. Your spending power or your purchasing power has just been limited by $1,000 so that the government can benefit based on your labor. Now, as we all know, taxes should go towards fiscal spending by the government, and we should see it in ways that are beneficial to us and increase our standard of living. You know, everyone paying taxes so that roads can stay paved, and there is a military and police force, hospitals and education, some form of standardization, all things that government governments are ultimately in control of. So I'm not saying taxes have no benefit. I'm just wondering why we still pay taxes. So in the past, I totally get, we were on the gold standard, everything was backed by gold, and we had to pay real backed money to the government so they could use that real money on our goods and services that we qualify for. And that kind of system makes a lot of sense. But ever since we switched to fiat currency, to me, it just makes no sense other than for the government to impose and manipulate their will on the individual. Currently, individuals spend 80 to 90% of all of their income in taxes. And it's even worse if you happen to be in the top tax bracket. There's the obvious big ones that everyone talks about, state, federal, social security, and so on. But then there's the other ones that people don't really calculate like they do. Everyone will calculate their percentage that they pay in taxes, really only calculating the state and federal income tax brackets that they're in. But you pay more in taxes than just state and federal income tax. In addition to all those, you can also pay a sales tax, you can pay an excise tax, you can pay a property tax, you can pay a luxury tax because cer certain goods are taxed as luxury and are taxed even more. You could even pay a local governance tax. There's so many taxes that individuals have to pay whenever they go out into the real world. Any situation, there's probably a tax to it. There's also things that are considered hidden taxes. The most famous, most infamous hidden tax to the American people is inflation itself. Now, this is kind of a concept that a lot of people can't really wrap their head around. How is inflation and printing money equal to taxing and giving the government money? And it's actually because the government can print money and it's fiat currency and not gold backed on why this is considered a hidden tax. Remember what we said a tax was. A tax is basically you limiting your spending power by some amount and giving it to the government for their benefit. When the government prints money into existence and spends it right away, they spend money into existence, they're seeing the benefit, but all that money gets spent and, and in turn gets injected into the total monetary supply. So more and more dollars are hitting supply, which means the value of each individual dollar goes down. So they've printed money into existence for their own benefit, and in return, your spending power due to inflation goes down. It's really the same definition as a tax. Your spending power goes down for the government's benefit. And that's why they call inflation the hidden tax. So when you factor in your income taxes, the capital gains taxes, which I guess are still just income taxes, sales, property, excise tax, and all the other taxes, including inflation, the hidden tax, individuals pay so much money to taxes. A vast, vast majority of their income all goes into taxes. And sure, the government spends that and we have services and different welfare programs. But my answer is why are we paying taxes in general if the government can just print money into existence? Everyone worries about our debt load and our debt burden because it's over 120% what our GDP is. Let's think about this. If the government can print money into existence, they can cover all of its costs and all of its services already. Whether or not we pay taxes, the government spends more than we give them in taxes anyway, so 
we're already doing this. Let's instead commit to that idea, give the people all of its money back in taxes so that we have more money at the end of every month in taxes. And that money can go into the economy to further supply and demand and further economic growth, thus increasing the GDP. Now, in a perfect world, we could have zero taxes, printable money, and the GDP would keep growing to match its debt load from the government. You have an extra thousand dollars a month that you're no longer paying in taxes, so you spend that in the economy. If everyone spends those thousand dollars into the economy, then other businesses and other services will in turn make more money and be able to pay its employees more money as well. Now, obviously there is the greed factor. That happens now and businesses save the best bonuses for their top employees. But having an extra one, two or $3,000 that you're no longer paying in taxes every single month, you'd be able to divert your spending in a free market however you want. If we realize one particular company is just too greedy and is not really doing the best for their employees, then we can choose to take our business elsewhere and those employees can choose to work elsewhere and that company will eventually go out of business in a free market scenario. Again, this is all utopian perfect world where we're spending into the economy, the economy's growing, in turn we're making more money, thus we could spend more money, and our GDP continues to grow year over year, and obviously so would the government's deficit spending, and so would their printing and lending money into existence for their own spending. But when you think about it, if we're already borrowing money into existence to cover our bills as a government, there's really no reason any of us should ever have to pay taxes again because the government wants to spend money, the Federal Reserve just prints it into existence, and the government pays interest on that debt to the Federal Reserve in money. But we're already having to borrow money to pay for that interest, so okay, we'll pay the Federal Reserve interest, but instead we're just gonna borrow more money from the Federal Reserve to pay for it on its interest. And this is the never-ending cycle that we are already doing now. So it raises the question, if we're already spending the money, why are we even being taxed? It just makes no sense to me anymore. And this is where I think it factors in or plays into manipulation of the individuals and their freedoms. The government gets all of its power from being in control of all the individuals. As much as this country was founded by the people for the people and ran by the people, we're really no longer in that era anymore and a lot of people are starting to realize that the government is completely overstepping and total government overreach is just around the corner if it hasn't arrived already. But really, the only reason we still pay taxes anymore is so that the government can take money from you with one hand and say, don't worry, I'm gonna use this money for good and help you. And in turn, offer that help to you or someone else with that same dollar amount. But now there's conditions. Now, in order to receive this funding, you're not allowed to buy weapons. You're not allowed to buy alcohol. You're not allowed to buy gold or some other condition that the government has set upon you. When in reality, you could have just used that extra money if you didn't have to pay taxes and buy whatever services you were looking for anyway without the government's intervention at all. That's the benefit of the free market that we live in. And even though there'll be ups and downs in the free market, even though there'll be scammers and bankruptcies and greed in the free market, without the government's control and without us having to pay taxes, we the individual have way more power to direct where the economy and where innovation goes with all of that money. Instead of giving that money to the government only for them to spend more than they make anyway, we could take all that money back, not pay any taxes, and really direct the course of the economy ourselves. And I think that's the real reason we still pay taxes even on a fiat currency is because the government doesn't want us to have that much control over the economy. I hope it got value in this video. I hope I made you think about things in a different way. If you have any questions on regular taxes, if you have any questions or concerns about inflation being a hidden tax or just disagree or agree with my thoughts, feel free to message me and we can keep the conversation going. I have a dedicated Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter account or just leave a comment down below and I'll respond when I have time. Either way though, the choice is yours and I'll see you in the next episode.